Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, GeForce Now is bleeding games, the first real look at Intel's upcoming 10th gen CPUs, pricing leaks, and AMD's next gen Arcturus GPU is a beast. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, GeForce Now, NVIDIA's newly launched cloud-based gaming platform looks to be having a really rough time. First, Activision's Blizzard pulled support for all of their games due to a reported licensing dispute. And now, NVIDIA announced on their forums that Bethesda has followed suit by pulling all of their games except for Wolfenstein Youngblood. And it's crazy because this was just a day after NVIDIA announced a day one release of Cyberpunk 2077 and that they'd hit the 1 million user milestone. Of course, with that said, NVIDIA claims to have over 1,500 new games coming, so maybe things will eventually turn around. So far though, it's not looking too good. With that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you love talking all things hardware and gaming, make sure to check out the GamerMeld Discord server at discord.gg GamerMeld. Next up for today, we have our first somewhat review of Intel's upcoming 10th gen CPUs. For those who don't know, a couple weeks ago, XFastest shared some images of an engineering sample for Intel's upcoming i9-10900, and they promised to run some benchmarks. Well, they've now done that in a recently released video, though I have no idea how they got the motherboard with the new 1200 chipset. Now, before I go over this, understand that the clocks are quite a bit lower than the final product because this is an engineering sample, but we can get a fairly decent idea of how it compares when figuring the difference in clocks. When it comes to the final result, the 10900 got a single core score in Cinnamon Char 15 of 182 and a multi-core score of 1670. Then in Cinebench R20, it got a single core score of 441 and an all core score of 3714. Finally, in CPU Z, it got a single core score of 507.8 and a multi core score of 5343. Now, keeping in mind that the 10900 is a 10 core CPU, when we look at the scores of Intel's current 8 core 9900K, you start to realize that this is very much a 14 nanometer part. And honestly, I'd say the scores are around exactly what you would expect given the clocks and adding two more cores, meaning I wouldn't expect much of a difference in IPC. Also, considering it got up to 68 degrees Celsius at such low frequencies, heat may be a real issue with this one. Still, this was obviously an engineering sample and they're almost certainly using some kind of modified BIOS. Basically, this will definitely be more impressive in the final product, but things are still not looking so good for Intel's upcoming CPUs, especially with AMD's next gen not too far off. With that said, you won't have to wait very long since Intel's upcoming processors were recently spotted at a couple online retailers, specifically Czech and Slovakian retailers. Unfortunately, they didn't list all of the upcoming CPUs, but they do have prices on them, and what's interesting is that video cards made a comparison to the pricing on one of the stores with their 9th gen CPUs. As you can see, the prices have actually gone up by up to 15 euros. Of course, this could just be the initial inflation we see at the launch of every product as early buyers clamor to get the newest product, but then again, maybe that's not all that much considering Intel has gone up in cores across the board. I guess time, as always, will tell. Lastly for today, I've got a bit of an older story, but one that's still really interesting. In a recently shared tweet by Game, you can see he claims the Arcturus GPU has up to 128 CUs, which is a massive number. Now, for those who don't know, Arcturus's BIOS was recently found in TechPowerUp's database, and so far we know that it comes with a massive 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, and it has a TDP of 200 watts, which is almost unbelievable. If you're not sure what Arcturus is, so far it seems that it's going to be the GPU that's set to debut in AMD's upcoming MI100 Accelerator, and it definitely needs all of those cores to get the 100 ter operations of computational power the name suggests. Of course, it's given the room to do so because it doesn't have a 3D engine, so this definitely isn't a gaming card, but it does go to show just how serious AMD is about separating their architectures for gaming, AI, etc. And I personally find it really interesting as Intel is clearly planning to do the complete opposite with their XE architecture. Maybe Intel's figured something out that AMD hasn't, but it seems fairly doubtful. It's likely just something to keep the cost down for Intel with them just starting out. Either way, it'll be interesting to see what AMD can do in the market moving forward. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for 10th gen Intel or are you just ready to see Big Navi? Let me know down in the comments below. 
And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.